Hey guys, it's Mind Pump time. Now you're probably wondering why I'm not screaming into the microphone like I usually do. That's Doug's fault. You see, he said, I'm too loud and I blow people's ears out. And some of you commenters are big wimps and you said that in the comments. So now I'm going to be quiet Ooh. unless unless a lot of you disagree and like it when I say boom real loud on this microphone. If that's you, leave a comment below in the first 24 hours. Give us a reason why you think it's a good idea that I scream into the mic or don't scream into the mic. We will pick your comment if we like your comment and if we do... You'll win free access to MAPS PED. What is that? That is by far the most advanced MAPS program that we have. It's a double split routine, tons of volume. For those of you that really want to challenge your bodies and you think you got the genetics that can handle it and the recovery ability, this program is intense. It is insane. So leave a comment in the first 24 hours, but also subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. One more thing. We are having a sale on two workout programs, MAPS Performance, MAPS Suspension, both 50% off. If you're interested or you just want to sign up because you're real smart, head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just don't forget to use the code SEPTEMBER50. That's SEPTEMBER50 with no space for that discount. All right, here comes the show. I am loving the studies that they're doing right now on health and fitness because so one of the main reasons why resistance training, lifting weights, right, strength training, whatever, one of the main reasons why it's not uh, typically talked about in mainstream medicine as a way to improve your health and why it's typically been relegated to like just bodybuilders and stuff is because there just weren't a lot of studies. They just never did a lot of studies on resistance training. All the studies were either athletic performance and that's it. And then if there was a study on exercise, it was, it was done on cardio. That was just how they did it. So doctors never recommended it. We and The only advice you would get around resistance training for health came from people who actually work in the space and say, actually, it's a superior way of working out for all these reasons. Well, anyway, studies are piling up now, right? So it's been like the last five years and, you know, we called it and I told you guys, I feel like there's going to be a, you know, that's why I named the book, The Resistance Training Revolution. I feel like it's going to happen regardless that people are going to start paying attention. Well, studies are coming out. They did a huge study on resistance training versus cardio for fat loss. And they, it was a long study. So they actually tracked, I think, 100,000 people over six oh, wow. years. So it's a long time. It's a big study. And these were all active people. But some of them chose cardio as their form of exercise, and others showed resistance oh, training. And in the average was two days a week of resistance training. And the average for cardio was two or three days a week of cardio. So it was pretty similar. And what they found was that resistance training was connected to better outcomes for fat loss and for health. So in that long, six years, over a six year period, wow. they found it to be, and we know this, right? We found it, they found it to be superior for, for fat loss and for health uh, in comparison to, you know, what's typically the form of exercise that people are, are referred to for those things, which is, which is cardio. Do you think we're really close to it being like on normal like cable television scene? These- Within five years. I, I I'll give it about five years before you really start to see it be uh, promoted that way. Then there was another study that came out on strength training and um, cognitive function. And what they found was across the board improvements in cognitive function. Now, they found in the past that just exercising in general improves cognitive function but this particular study showed that there's a probably a it leans towards a better effect with resistance training and my theory is that you know because muscle is so insulin sensitive that in one of the there's a strong connection between insulin resistance and dementia and alzheimers that that may be why resistance training is so good for brain function so there's another study yeah. so now we're having studies showing it's great for Range of motion, injury prevention, heart disease, fat loss, brain function, hormone you know balance, like in men, testosterone, women, estrogen, and progesterone. We're getting close to the point where that become this becomes the main form of exercise that people are re- recommended. It'd be great if that all kind of uh, found its way back into the school system and they focus oh, more geez. on resistance training instead years. of just you know <laughs> walking around the track and doing aimless Bro, movement. Give it twenty years. The school <laughs> yeah. the school system gets it's like ridiculous. Yeah, mainstream advice is like takes ten years, right, and then add another twenty 
for school. Yeah, but like, uh, uh, to that point, and in, in, in terms of it being popular, like, don't you think that they'll probably try to make whatever you know machine that does it all, like the bow flex kind of a situation, like that might have a resurgence. Like it's like the one stop shop for resistance and it, training. It'll cost taxpayers so it, much money when you could just buy like dumbbells. Exactly, you, know, you just <laughs> you know? buy that. But it's like you got to be educated. But it's still, I tell you what, I was having this conversation with my son. We were talking about. He has now, I don't know what class it is, but they were talking about um, nutrition. So they're talking about macronutrients, how they affect the body. And he goes, yeah, he goes, um, saturated fat just clogs your arteries. And I said, hmm? Yeah, hmm? Right. So we're having this conversation. I'm like, it's way more complex than that. And no, it sounds like they're teaching you outdated information. And so my son's like debating me because he learned from his whatever, uh -huh. his teacher. Uh -huh. I said, no, here's how it actually works. So there's still... Backwards. They're yeah. still totally backwards with the with the stuff that they teach. Just uh, that, though. They got everything else really well, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. Speaking, speaking totally. of the high schools, I wanted to talk to you, Justin. So I went to um, my my nephew. He's a freshman at Sierra, which is um, okay. Tom Brady's uh, high school. And we went and watched him play his first his first game. Dude, the, the systems they have in place there are crazy. So, uh, and what I mean by that is like how they can track the kids and how much effort that they're putting towards like practice. Really? So they, oh yeah. So they have like- well, They got money there. So, yeah, yeah. Right. So they, they track like when they show up to practice, how long, uh, mm. uh, like statistically how many plays they make during practice. Everything's videoed mm -hmm. and then uploaded uh, online. So then the kids can access and then study film and then they can track through their IP address how much time the students. So here you come to practice on Wednesday and I see, oh man, Justin spent two hours studying film in the last two days. And then yeah. you've got, you know, the other kid is the slack off who spent a whole total five minutes or no time studying film. And they actually weigh that into like, really? Just, yeah. Or they yeah. can just leave it on, you know, at home. Flip see, we have a lot of that like access. So huddle is like what all the coaches use now and the kids and they all kind of are able to have access to videos and be able to watch like upcoming teams and, and kind of break down tendencies. Um, but a lot of times these teams are stingy with the film that they upload. And so like, uh, for instance, we're going in this weekend and the team, the head coach didn't want to give us any film, like gave us like something from like two years ago. <laughs> and it's like, dude, really? Like, come on. Like we're, we were about to give them like 18 film of like our recent, uh, uh, even our jamboree and like we haven't we haven't been able to play the first two weeks because of this whole covid stuff uh that uh, i don't even know if i updated you guys on all this debacle but no no it's i mean i've i've had to self-quarantine for like 10 days because of the district's policy as a coach even and so one of the kids had exposure at school and so the the policy is like even if you have exposure and you're you test negative uh, you have to then you're out for 10 days regardless. So you can't play football. You can't do any extracurricular activity, but you can go to school, which uh, is kind of hilarious to me. Like, like how does that make any sense? <laughs> you can go sit in uh, yeah. classrooms inside, <laughs> you know, with every single other kid, but you can't go out on an open field in the sun uh, and play a sport. And so anyway, so we lost like one of our best players because uh, their parents are so pissed off with this whole thing. And so they like transferred over to like a rival school. Oh no. And it's so anyways, like there's just been one thing after the next. And so all, a lot of our volunteer coaches are gone now. They can't come back because unless God. they become hired by the school, which is what I had to do. Now all of a sudden I am an employee of the school. Oh, so, really? Just so you guys know. Wow. Yeah. I'm taking on two jobs. I think now. we have a clause in your contract yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's a, I don't think you could do that. I don't think there's no moonlighting. Listen, here, listen I'm moonlighting. I'm, I'm being up and, and honest about it. Yeah. You don't remember the contract? Uh, we, guys, we split your salary now. Yeah. That yeah. <laughs> until you, still you're not, don't work there. Yeah. So just so that way, I, now I got to be tested like twice a week. Uh, and then um, anyway, so it's just, it's been a, a complete headache for this whole season. We've missed two of our first games, uh, which now we moved one for the bye week. We were able to kind of play them again during the bye week, so we saved that one. But, dude, poor kids, man. Like, it's just been a rough start. It's, our, a lot of the stuff that they do doesn't make sense. Did you guys see – I don't remember where it was, big wrestling tournaments or whatever. It might have been college. The, the rules were that the kids wrestling – can't shake, you know, before the match, they shake hands. Yeah. Not allowed to shake hands. <laughs> Would you go wrestle with They're them? They're wrestling. 
Does that make any sense at no. all? Yeah. There's so much. Like, it's so illogical. What yeah. the yeah. fuck? Yeah. Like, yeah. like, it's like it would be like you're shooting a porn. Hey guys, everybody, because of COVID, no kissing. Okay, yeah. everything else is fine though. <laughs> yeah. You just bang each other. Doesn't matter. But you know, don't let your lips touch your sense. lips. Yeah. You can kiss her, you know, butthole, but don't yeah. kiss her face. Yeah. All right, I'm here fine we go. with policies that make sense, but the ones that don't, it's just like, come on, I'm a slap you. Super frustrating. Yeah. See, well, all right. Well, I'm gonna talk about some fun stuff just to change the mood. Thank you. I was. Uh, this weekend was the annual sauce making. Yeah, that's how you guys turned us down. We Bonanza. invited all you guys to the beach and nobody showed up, and your excuse was uh, sauce canning. I got to <laughs> do it. I got to do it. So, every, you know what's funny? I think Courtney made something up for me. I don't even know what it was. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, he, has to, he has to do Sunny Do List. Like, tell him something. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, um, you know what's funny with the internet? I'm now, you're seeing a lot of people now share videos and pictures of their families making sauce, which is kind of cool. So, it's now it's like, People are aware of it. Because when I was a kid, nobody, you know, I'd tell my friends, they'd be like, you do what? Like, yeah. you guys get together and make sauce. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Well, we make it a sauce. But huh? I see people sharing it all over Instagram now, which is kind of cool. Because it's, a, like I said, it's a big thing. But we all got together and we did, I think we did like 800 pounds, which is not a lot for us. We've done as much as 2,000 pounds of tomatoes. But we did 800 pounds of tomatoes and we finished it all in one day. You guys getting lazy now or what's the deal? Why? No, it's Why? because, so the family, as it grows, people start to have kids and then their kids, right? And so then you can't possibly have everybody together. It just It's just too many people. So we tend to break up now, right? So this was my mom's family and her kids, my aunt and her kids, and then, um, and I think that was it. Yeah, that was it. So we all got together. But if you include my other aunts, my uncle, so then they, it's just way too many people. Are they now doing their own sauce? Yeah, they'll do their own. Okay, so yeah, they'll do their own. okay, so you guys so, just divided it up. Yeah, as far so as the we household. get together, but the kids get involved, right? So my daughter's outside cutting tomatoes. My son's inside, and so the way it works is like, my dad will go buy all the tomatoes, and then he'll bring them back, and so everything's ready in the garage. Well, there's like a, a setup where. You put you you have to first cook the the sliced tomatoes, then you put them in this machine. You stuff them in the machine. It spits out the sauce, spits out the skins. Then you take the sauce and then you put them in jars. You boil it, and it's this whole process. And then when you're outside, you wash the tomatoes, cut them. So all the kids are like helping. I got my little my little nephew who's six years old, and he's I, I'll show you guys pictures and stuff. He's like squatting down. He's like washing. You know, he's not really helping. He thinks he's helping, right? He's yeah. washing the every once in a while, throwing at me. And I'm like, Frankie, don't throw tomatoes. <laughs> I mean, you got to help. Okay. Are there, are there, um, you know, are there rules? Are there like family, because it's a tradition that's been going for so long. Is there like expectations or rules by the family that, oh, we yeah, start at this people time? People claim certain jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, have you guys built like rules around this? Um, maybe unsaid ones, right? Yeah. So when it comes to the heavy lifting, the washing, the cutting, that's usually uh, me or my dad will be out there. Although now my dad manages more than, than doing that kind of stuff. Um, when it comes to like the jarring of the tomatoes, it's usually my mom, my aunt. And then the kids will help with the machine because it's kind of easy. Like you sit in front of the machine, you just kind of stuff the tomatoes down. Mm -hmm. Or you sit outside with me and then, like I said, like my little nephew Frankie was helping me. Wash the tomatoes. After oh. about three hours, though, he was a little squirrely. I'm like, we gotta, we gotta hire your family to come over. I don't know if I told you, we got like, a, like an orchard of different like fruit trees really? in our backyard. Yeah, like all these like, uh, everything from pears, apples, grapes, like, like you name it, dude. It's like yeah. I was like, what do we do with all this stuff? And you have to like, you have to get rid of it, otherwise, like the tree falls over, dies. Oh, you know, so you have to like continually. Uh, harvest it and like prune it and stuff, and I'm like, oh my god! You can hire somebody nightmare. for do out. Oh all yeah, that. for sure. Yeah. I have to figure that out. Well, so here's what's funny, right? So I get there, and you know, Ned has the the hemp oil in capsules, and my dad's been using it, and yeah. he loves it. He loves it for his back. He says it makes him feel good. His pain is good. So I I get a bottle of it and I bring it over there to my mom, and my mom she takes it and like she kind of like hides it. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, well, you know, it's I'm like, mom, it's not weed, it's hemp. You know, it's the way she's treating it like she's like, <laughs> yeah. and she's like, I like it. I'm like, what do you, so my mom's using it. I'm like, what do you mean you like it? And she goes, you know, I feel really good when I take it at night, I take it and your dad and I, and, and you know, we watch TV together and we hang out. You're like, that's bit. enough information, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Can't it be in the mood? Yeah. I'm like, whatever. Okay. But it was funny the way she did. I'm like, it's hemp. It's not weed. You, could, <laughs> you need to hide the bottle of the, of the net, but she likes it. She said it helps her with her, like she, her, she's got anxiety. So it helps her with anxiety. Yeah. And then my dad with his back. So now they're both, you know, hemp oil. Now what, users, which uh, what cool. of, of Ned's products, which one do you personally use the most? I like, uh, so 
I like Mellow a lot. That one's really good. Yeah, but what do you what are you most consistent of all the one, all their products? Do you I, honestly, the old school hemp oil. I, I go back to that all the time. Yeah, I love. I I just it's really uh, you feel really good. You just feel you actually feel it. I don't know if you guys have, have you guys used other CBD like uh, yeah, type products. Of course, you don't feel them. No, yeah, no you take them and you don't effect. notice anything. You what know? about you, Justin? What do you? Yeah. Um, well, you, I was using the sleep. Yeah, you use the bit. sleep a lot. I yeah, thought. but then I kind of stopped because there's you can actually overdo it. Uh, and I have, and the next day I was just like, so groggy, Yeah, you know, but like it, you gotta it get works. the right amount. It totally works. And, and I, I love it for if I've, my mind's racing and I have just like a constant, um, couple days where I've just been trying to mm. hammer things out and I'm just, ah, I'm like all just, you know, crazy energy. And so it just helps me to just get knocked out and recharged. But then mellow for me has been uh, a lot more manageable in terms of like continually using it and then being able to kind of chill out and then, you know, get ready for, for sleep. It's been helping. Well, me a mellow lot doesn't, that. mellow doesn't work with the cannabinoid receptors. So it's just, you know, it's, it's those forms of magnesium, a little bit of GABA. The hemp oil obviously has all the cannabinoids in there, including CBD, you know, CBG, CBC, and all the other ones minus the THC. And when it comes to the cannabinoid receptors, uh, they can start to change how they're regulated. So they can downregulate or upregulate. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you could take consistently take lots of cannabinoids, and like not unlike caffeine, you'll find that your your tolerance you know will start to build. Yeah. So that's just. But for people who, so cannabinoid deficiency syndrome is something that they're starting to research. That's hmm. a thing. Yes. So they're 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 well they're researching it because they find there's. Definitely people who have tremendous benefit from supplementing with phytocannabinoids, cannabinoids from plants. And they just notice this huge benefit. And these are the same people that tend to suffer from a little bit of anxiety or they'll have pain or you know they'll, they'll, their mood's a little off. And basically what it is is that their bodies may not be producing uh, adequate amounts of, for whatever reason, endocannabinoids. Mm. So they call that cannabinoid deficiency syndrome. And in that case, then taking a regular supplement probably would benefit. Now, do you believe the opposite is true? Or is there some people that are just non-responders to it and don't feel like they get any benefit whatsoever? I'm sure there is. I yeah, mean, there's, there's always be. an individual variance kind of with everything. So anyway, I want, oh, I, here's something I want to ask you guys about. You know, you guys ever get calls where I'm sure you do, where people are they're, they're scammers and they're they're starting yeah. to get really smart. That's all. We're getting that a lot right now. Right yeah. now, right? Yeah. And text messages too. That's like crazy. A, every day, I'm I'm now getting at yeah. least two to four of these, and it's everything from uh, UPS to tax to uh, Wells Fargo to yeah, AT and T, your phone, new, Walmart, yeah, Amazon. I get a text from one of them all the time about, oh, you have this package, whatever. It's just to get you to click so on it. They're really smart. So what they're starting to do, and I'll tell you the last one in a second. My buddy showed me, and I thought it was freaking brilliant and hilarious at the same time. What they're trying to do now is they're almost like they're targeting people, not specific people, because I'm sure they blanket this out, but they're targeting people who already are probably a little bit paranoid with certain situations. So of I'll course. give you one example that happened a while ago to a buddy of mine. I don't want to call him out because I make fun of him to this day, but he got called. He got a phone call saying it was from the IRS. Yeah. And they said, hey, um, you owe this much. We know that you lied on your taxes. There's a huge fine. If you pay it right now, then we're okay. We'll settle it. If you don't, we're going to do an audit. Now, because this guy that I know did a little bit of lying on his taxes, he's already freaked out. Right. And so he actually went and paid them. And then later on found out he got scammed, which yeah. is hilarious. They're right? like, yeah, go down and get a cashier's check. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, bro, the IRS. You mean uh, gift cards? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. That's what we take at oh. the IRS. And, and they threatened to take him to jail. I'm like, bro, the IRS doesn't call you like that. And they don't, they're not going to take <laughs> yeah, you to jail over it. Yeah. Yeah. They don't do any homie hookups. So he got ripped off. But the reason why he fell for it was because he's already of course. Kinda, right. Yeah. Okay. So here's the latest one. I thought this was. So brilliant. I took a picture of it because I'm like, this. I could see how some people would totally fall for this. So here was the, here's the scam. He gets a text from random number. Just a, a, just received a call. Oh, he just he just received a call from U.S. Customs. So this is him telling me. Apparently, I have a load of drugs that is sitting down south, and I need to contact them. So here's what they did. They called him and said, Hey, we caught a package of yours down here, and it's contraband. 
and you're not going to get it. And here's what we need to do. So obviously, if you're somebody <laughs> that's waiting for drugs, yeah. wow. you're shitting your pants <laughs> and you're probably going to do what they tell you to do. So he's laughing because he's like, get the fuck out of here. That's right? how my uh, Katrina's mom and I were talking <laughs> about it. She's smart. getting it. And my theory is they, it's, they're just setting him out by the tens of thousands yeah. and you know, there's gotta be a, a percentage of those people that are just happen to be stressing about their taxes and, and then, or, are, or that they ordered or that they got oh, some drugs. Right. right. You know, I imagine mean, if that was you. sophisticated. Like I think Courtney got one where, uh, yeah, they said something was off like, uh, at the bank and then it leads you, like it has a whole link that looks like something, something yes. chase.com, you know, slash whatever. Yeah. And then it directs you to this total fake, uh, Chase page. web, but it looks real. It looks exactly the same. Yeah, it's designed for you to put your, your is, password. Yeah, in. and then it started to ask her for social security, and I was like, and she's like, social security, like, and so that's where finally she got tipped off. But they almost got her. I'm like, no, yeah. don't do it. I got one from Instagram. I got a DM, and the page literally was Instagram. It said Instagram on it, and they DM me and said, hey, your account looks like it's gonna it's getting hacked. Please log in, change your password. And I knew it was bullshit, but I just want to see what it looked like. I clicked on the link, and it looks like yeah. an Instagram page. And then what you do is you go to log in. Of course, now you give them your password, yeah. and they go in and they, they fuck with your I shit. I wonder how much this has in increased in social media. You think it's like quadrupled Tons. it? Oh, yeah. Tons. This, how this, you know what? I, the scamming's changed, though. Like, Remember that uh, that documentary we watched, the, the, the scam rapper or whatever? Oh, yeah. I, I feel like uh, now it's you get people to voluntarily give you their money, so it's such a gray area. I'm uh -huh. sure, sure to try and catch these people or punish them. It's like, you know, that guy told that story of how he pretends like he's a hot chick and then he gets someone to buy a plane ticket. It's like you didn't, I didn't steal your credit card. You will, willingly. And they're like ashamed that they went yeah. through it, and so they won't pursue any kind of totally. Yeah. So I wonder, I wonder how how much of this is like really going on right now. If it's way worse than it's that's, ever been. That's a, that's that's one of the number one strategies is that you. You get somebody to do something that they're they'd be ashamed of, so they'll never report you. It's like, right. it's like when uh, you know a, a stripper would you know take someone's credit card, charge them way the hell up, yeah. and the dude's not going to go fight because he's like, I don't just want to get back to his wife. Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, uh, I don't know, you know, I don't want to go back and try and fight. And even if it's way. not crazy like that, just knowing that you willingly gave your money up for a scam, you feel kind of like an idiot. Yep. So even if it's not something you that's just chalk you, it up, yeah, you're just like, fuck, I should have known yeah, better, so I don't do anything. Yeah, so when I get calls like that, if I have the time, what I like to do is I like to just keep them on the phone forever. And I've done this in front of my kids before. So I'll play along <laughs> yeah. and then I'll be like, hold on a second. Let me go get my credit card and I'll put them on hold and then we'll go do something. And I'll you know, <laughs> give them 10 minutes. I'll come back on. What did you need again? And then just do it for a while and then eventually they <laughs> Oh, it. I was on the phone with the Comcast guy forever. We were dying laughing because I don't know if he had some kind of Tourette's or what, but he'd said like the same thing over and over and over again. He's like, excellent, perfect, perfect, excellent, excellent, perfect, perfect, excellent. <laughs> Excellent, perfect, sir. Excellent. Amen. I was still working on it. Still working on it. And he like kept me on the phone. I'm like, you know, you'd be a lot more effective if you just shut the fuck up and like did your your little thing in search you instead of saying, that? yes, excellent, perfect, yes, yes, sir, yes, uh, Comcast, great, yes, excellent, perfect. <laughs> like, it, it was like, and then I brought the kids to listen. They're dying laughing, and we're just like, yes, excellent, perfect, and we just like repeat it back to them. <laughs> Poor guy. What a dick. It's probably the only job he's ever probably, had. Yeah, he was really excited, <laughs> and, I, and I'm just shitting he's, all over him. He's doing the best job yeah, that he can. Yeah. <laughs> hey, did you guys did you guys see the news? Uh, I think in Australia they oh, no. are starting these what they call well camps or wellness camps, quarantine camp. Yes, is this real? <sighs> yeah, it's a, there's a segment. I can't remember what part of Australia, Queensland, I think. Yeah, and yeah. if you have COVID, now I don't know if they force you, but I think they do. Then they take you to a wellness camp for quarantine, and you have to go. Yeah. So yeah. it's only gonna be a couple days. I swear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. Well, th here's another Scary, one. Scary dude. They passed the bill, so I just saw. So people send me this kind of stuff, right? Because, you know, they know you know kind of my positions or whatever. So they passed the bill, and I gotta find. Oh, here you go. So here's it's called the Australian Criminal Intelligence Commission, and there's a new power. There's three new powers that they've given police. So now they can they ha they have what's called a data disruption warrant. It gives the police the ability to disrupt data by modifying, copying, adding, or deleting your social media and whatever. So now they have the power to do that. Wow. There's also a network activity warrant, which allows the police to collect intelligence from devices or networks that are used, or that are used or likely to be used by those subject to the warrant. So now they can go in and pretend to be you, and start collecting shit, and they can also take over. 
all of your and they wonder why we're so resistant about lockdowns here yeah look at look at what that could do and then here's another one so people are sending me this so this is so this is somewhere in australia but if you come back from a particular area you're obviously you have to do what's called a 14 day quarantine but they have this app that you download and on this app this app has geolocation on it that at any moment they can text you so, and this is how it works. You have this app. Okay, I'm supposed to be quarantined for 14 days. I, I can't go anywhere. The police will randomly text you. And within 15 minutes, you have to send them a picture of yourself, where you're at, and it has to match the geolocation. If it doesn't, then they'll send police out to come looking for you. <laughs> Sounds like some helicopter parents. Dude, dude this is that's wild. That's crazy. So bad. That is wild, dude. That's I haven't heard. Scary. Have you heard from anybody from Australia in your uh, DMs? I haven't heard from anybody on social media from. Well, you know what? Australian well, our, people. We have a lot of listeners over there. Yeah, and I remember it was, it was like, like all the time I'd hear from them, and now nothing. No, I, I get I get DMs. I have. There's a lot of people that don't like it, and then there's some people that uh, support it. But how I don't, can you support that? It's there's not. Gonna, a, there's got to be insane. a lot of people that support it if this stuff gets passed That's and ridiculous. goes through, right? I mean, enough to where I guess they're not afraid to pass this kind of stuff. I mean, they're not a, they're not a dictatorship over there, right? So I mean, if there's, I mean, people <laughs> are looks like people are here. voting voting it in and agreeing. I don't know. They don't have the same uh, kind of protections that we necessarily have over here. Although things can get crazy here too. The problem is, is it's uh, typically things move with a slow boil, and then before by the time you're like, wait a minute. This can't happen. I Whoa, need to speak out. out of hand. Now yeah. they have the power to take out, take over your media, and you can't speak out, and you can't organize, and that kind of stuff. So throw it, you in some camps, lock you up. What's no a big little? Deal. Yeah. Or um, the other thing is that when things are over, they typically don't go away. For example, we passed the Patriot Act and NDAA after September 11th. That's never going away. You know, the mm -hmm. war on terror. Is it ever going to be over? Did either one of you guys watch that, uh, the Netflix documentary on 9 11 yet? No. It's go I know it's in the top 10 right now. It's really? Going, yeah, it's going viral. Have I don't it. know. I haven't watched I was going to watch it last night, but I ended up watching Billions instead. Was that good? Yeah. I know cool. you and Doug oh, are yeah. so excited. Billions about that. amazing. Uh, yeah. love Justin that. loves love it too. That show. You too, huh? Yeah. Oh, I love that show. I'll watch it when you guys are over it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do the same thing with Game of Thrones where yeah. we're already over it. We don't care like, that you It was like five years later. Did you? I bet you still have it. Well, you watched the Caitlyn Jenner one. I did. did you watch any of the other ones or no? no? You're like too much sports. No, I just <laughs> yeah. way too much. It's way too much. <laughs> no, I was just busy. Yeah. Shut up, dude. Oh, no, I uh, I got something interesting for you guys. Uh, Justin hear. might like this. Okay. So the Navy. What? When are you gonna bring something that I might like? The last like 15 in a row have been like Justin. You'll like this. I don't like you know, this. I'm not in. I don't like, know how to include. Like, I don't know anything about shoes or sports. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm, sorry, I'm not into cool that. shit. You yeah. Yeah. Shoes or sports. <laughs> you guys just don't cross paths. Yeah, I don't know. You might. This is actually. You'll you'll think this is interesting. So. The Navy yep. has a new weapon. It's uh, a new non-lethal weapon that they're that they now have. Non non-lethal? Yes. That sound one? It, did you hear about it? They've had it forever. The With one that the big No, uh, no, 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 no. That no. makes you like, yeah. They have like Humvees, it's attached on them and they direct makes the you sound. Or shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, this one's even the brown we, note. This one's even <laughs> <laughs> That's what they call it. The is, it is that what it's called? I don't know. I think no, that was it. Called is it? Somebody called it that, and it stuck. Right? Yeah, like it, it reverberates. Your, yeah, your, and it makes you shit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and they can no. Check this one out. So it's a special electronic device that is designed. Ready for this? To make people stop talking. What? What? Yes, dude. Wow. So they. That's so, like a superpower. So they can they they can focus it on one person, oh. and they bla they they focus it on them. And the person's own voice, this. the person's own voice is repeated back at them, only at them, every time they're trying to talk. Oh, my God. And it That reminds me of my first experience of being high. <laughs> that was a night. <laughs> Bro, I'd say, I called my best friend crying, dude. I was so fucking scared. <laughs> Yeah, dude, that was a. Hey, that kept me away from you like your voice years years old? Yeah, that was I was twenty. That's so that's what kept me from. That's what kept me from weed for like a decade. Right there, that dude. Twenty year old oh, Adam. Crying. Exact, the uh, experience that I tell people what it was like was I remember I I got to a point where I was I was so high that if I said something, it would just keep repeating in my head this on a loop. And it would freak me out. So <laughs> if I tried to express that, then that would go on a loop. It was like the worst. And then things were happening in a, on a loop. Oh, that was, I was like, this isn't for me. Hey, so wow. you, you get on the phone and you're like, yeah. hey, man. So that, that could be, yeah, I no, I did. I totally freaked him out. And the reason why I called him is because 
he had he had exper- he had smoked weed before me. He sp- smoked when we were in high school, and he never smoked again because that was his experience. Yeah. And so I was like, "Oh my God, it's happening to me!" So I knew he I knew he would understand. Uh, and he would, he came over and was just like, "Don't talk, yeah. just." You lay know what there. the fear I, of that was? He was like holding your hand. Yeah, and yeah, shit he totally like hold me, dude. Dude, I had a similar. It wasn't like that necessarily, but it was like I was staring out. I was out on this deck, and I was like looking outside and. It, like all of a sudden it seemed as though you know those old movie reels where you have like you know the split you could see sort of like uh, the scenes kind of like ch- like you're going through a slideshow yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so that's what i was seeing like i was like watching the world kind of go like on this really trippy like <laughs> slideshow and i was like am i gonna get out of this like yeah. i started freaking out and it was really bad I, and i stopped smoking so i so i the kind of relationship i try to have with my kids is they can ask me any questions so my son now 16 and he's asked me questions about weed it's legal obviously like what's the deal and he and he, i'm like well you know it's 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 def, it's almost it's pretty much non-lethal although now they make edibles so strong i'm waiting for now when people can actually overdose but it's very very hard to right i said but that doesn't mean that it's totally safe. I said one of the worst things to overdose on is is THC. It's oh, one of the it's yeah. terrifying. Yeah, it is it so amplifies te- all your fears. It is so terrifying yeah. that it'll stick with you psychologically for a long. You talk to anybody that's overdosed on an edible, and yeah, they'll tell yeah. you it fucked them up. It's, oh, it kept me away worst. for the the longest time. You should share the uh, that that famous recording of the cop. Oh, with him, shit. oh the, yeah, the cop that did the brownies. Yeah. Time was moving really slow. Yeah, and he thought he was gonna die, so that he called the cops he on himself. He, you know? Yeah, <laughs> he felt like an idiot after that. But dude, so apparently this electronic device, they aim it at someone, and it disorients them so much they that they hear their voice. They shut the, up. Now weird. here's my. You ready for the? Oh, I, would, right? I would love to have that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, not you guys, but you know, you get home from a long yeah, day. Yeah. Oh my God, let me tell you what happened. <laughs> I'm watching TV. Uh, it, it doesn't even, how does that work? That's so weird. Well, yes, very strange, and it, it's obviously effective, but here's where I start to get a little freaked out. Like, think about the ultimate, like the ultimate protest weapon. Like, wow. there's a protest going on. Yeah. You know, you guys can't, and they just shut the fuck up. Yep. You know, you over there doing the speech, yeah. getting everybody riled up, and then all of a sudden, uh, bro. you can't talk anymore? Damn. Dude, that's kind of creepy. That dude. is scary. That's a little bit scary. We yeah. live in, like, Twilight Zone yeah. stuff, dude, for yeah. sure. So, anyway, so what did you wow. do then? You guys just went to the beach alone, or what? Yeah, no, I mean, we had, we had a, uh, uh, our other family, right, was there, so it was just a small family. Second place? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. First place yeah. didn't want to show yeah. up. Yeah. So <laughs> No, uh, my actually, my brother-in-law, he just he had called us up a, a couple of days before. He said, yeah, it's supposed to be a beautiful day on the beach. What are you guys doing? We were in town, so we just went down there and hung out for the day. It was nice, really, really, really nice. I didn't realize that my my place, the this is the best weather, is this month and next month. I was telling Justin that the really? other day. Yeah. yeah. That the, the, you would think like, cause it's hot over here and stuff that it would be. Fall's the best. Yeah. yeah that's when the locals are out at the beaches. Wow. Well, the smoke, um, I, I it was getting kind of smoky uh, in San Jose a little bit this weekend, so, yeah. but you, where you're at, you don't see nothing, right? No. No smoke. No. Wow. That's good. Yeah. No, it's, you, it was bad. My, I mean, it's really bad up North. My sister had to cancel her trip. She was, they were playing poor. They, I feel so bad cause they're in Reno. So they're right in the thick of all those fires and stuff up there. And they have every year they take off for a week uh, for their anniversary. And this year they decided to go up to Oregon uh, to get away from the fires. And then like literally like two days before, like massive fires broke out up there and then they had to cancel their trip. So they came down to my place. They stay. They're at Perharo Dunes now, but they were at my house for a couple a couple days for their their anniversary. So my cousin has a place up in South Tahoe and South Lake Tahoe, and they got, of course, mandatory evacuation. And he went to go get some of his stuff, and he's like, "Dude, it was the weirdest thing." He's like, "You're driving, and you know it was safe to go there to grab your stuff." He goes, "But I mean, you could see the ash and stuff in front of your face, and it's like you want to get out of the car, in the house, back in the car, and gone." Yeah. Because it's like you, it's toxic. You know, I was thinking about was like yeah. how how dangerous and bad this is right now with COVID going. Because that's like a, a re- I your mean, lungs. I, yeah, I'm still convinced that the reason why I got COVID oh, yeah, the worst out of all good. of us is because I smoke out of all of us. Yeah. None of us, no, none of you guys smoke smoke weed. I smoke weed on a regular basis, and so I know that's not good or ideal yeah. uh-huh. uh, for my lungs. So Im- imagine if you are up up in the Tahoe Reno area and you're breathing in the smoke air all the time and then you get hit with a you know a respiratory th- uh, virus like that I, I'm I'm wondering if we're going to see like a a spike 
and like hospitalization and stuff like that up in those areas. Well, what you will see is typically places with worse air, uh, you see downstream events. So you see like 10% increases in lung cancers or other types of disorders and disease. So, it's, you know, now the sen really sensitive people, you'll probably see some stuff. But if this continues, because last year we had really bad fires too, right? This continues. Mm -hmm. It'll be like, it'll, you'll see the life expectancy of living in places like California start to drop because of the, the quality, because of mm -hmm. the poor air quality. Mm -hmm. But we'll see what happens, right? I'm wondering if now, because a lot of, I mean, there was, that fire is huge, right? Yeah. Is that gonna, does that mean it's going to prevent future fires now? Because it got rid of so much. You'd think, but then there's new ones keep popping up, man. It's crazy. That's, that's really well, isn't, crazy. I mean, isn't that one of the theories is that you, we, we actually need those fires? Like, isn't that like... Yeah, the I, underbrush is, I mean, it's kind of part of the cycles, but I mean, you, you as you saw, there's arsonists out there starting these things. So it's like, yeah. it's all <laughs> like, and plus they just don't have the resources they need to, to fight a lot of them, you know, here because it's been mismanaged so bad. So, yeah. you know, there's a lot of that, dude. There's a lot of that to consider and there just needs to be better leadership. Yeah, the controlled around. fires were really good at, like they would do controlled fires, right? To yeah. cr create breaks and stuff. And a lot of those... They just weren't doing anymore, partially because environmentalists said don't do it, and other there's other reasons. So then over time, you build just like all this basically, you know, flammable material. Yeah, yeah. And you're right. Na in 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 terms of nature, this is oh. a natural process to have these fires do that, but S it's dangerous. It's so right. speaking of that, like so like, like Scotch broom and all the stuff that's sort of like like hangs around underneath like the redwoods and all that. Like I just got closed over the weekend that now we're gonna have goats on our property. What? Yeah. You're getting goats? Goats. That's awesome. That's one of the best ways to clean up that your property. Is awesome. Do you know that? Yeah. You, is that what well, you Well, that's why I got closed. I did not know that. They they basically are like lawnmowers, yeah, you know, for all the underbrush and stuff like on, you know, property. So I was like, ah, dude, do I need more animals? You know, goats, chickens. You're gonna have like a regular old farm over I know, there, guy. Dude, I'm gonna, like, what's you happening? A, you need a cow too. You need one cow, <laughs> milk a cow. I don't have any room Wait, for a cow, no, but I'd be are, down. Are they gonna be always there, or are you just getting them to clear it up? No, they're always there. They got there. There is like a pen for them. I guess the previous owners had them uh, there, and I didn't know that. I thought it was like for dogs, but no, it's for goats. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Did you know That's that? Thing. So, okay. Did you know? I was watching this show with Jessica. Uh, it's like this home renovation shot. I don't remember the name of it, but this woman goes in and makes these incredible backyards, very talented. Did you drop some name. goat science right now? Well, no, this is, I didn't, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I didn't know this, yeah. right? I know people who own goats. No, yeah. <laughs> I, I have a goat friend. Yeah. No, here's, here's what, I didn't know you could do this. You can actually rent. There's people that have goats. Yeah. You pay them a fee. They bring the goats to your property and they clear out your property for they you. Do, they do that with cattle all the time. Yeah, I had no idea. You yeah, see yeah. them on the freeway doing that I, every now and then too. Like it was just a whole herd of goats. Just I had no idea. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that's it cool up. though. That yeah, you could do that. how many are you doing? How many are you getting? At least two, right? But uh, I don't know, maybe more, but uh, at least two because they, apparently they, you know, you need them. Yeah, you need. I think you need a good amount. I mean, I haven't been to your property yet to see like, but I've, from the pictures, it looks like there's a, quite a bit of stuff. Yeah, I imagine you're gonna need a few of them. Are they yeah, good? Pets? Need some. I get. I guess they're cool. Yeah, if, if you if you domesticate assholes. them and like you know, feed them, you know, hand bottle them or whatever that you get. I don't know. You get to feed them like a baby. Yeah. I think are so. are you guys gonna get them from like uh, when they're young? Or are you? Gonna yeah. So I guess one of Courtney's friends has them and then um, is you know got them pregnated. So then we're gonna get the the offspring from them. Uh, I'm excited to get a little yeah. farm over there, man. Now you so. eat, you can eat goat, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I mean, I mean you, you can, can eat any. You can. But, yeah. You can eat bat if you I want. I mean, if you got, yeah. <laughs> Adam's such a You pop. can milk him if you He's like, such a go-getter. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sal, you, technically, you can eat anything. Yeah. The sky's the it's limit. True. If you believe, you can I mean, eat. this is true. Why'd you say goats are assholes? Are you, are you? Oh yeah, they have like they have. They're like little dick personalities. Dude. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. They'll buck you. And yeah, all that. they're little like, assholes. Yeah. Dude. Oh wait a minute! Yeah, are you gonna put on a helmet and go go ham against one? For of them? sure, dude. I know we'll, it. Yeah, I know we'll, it. If one pisses off we'll Justin, you'll be like, "Oh, yeah. you get a three point they, they stance." Nip, and they knock nip them out. a lot and they headbutt like crazy and and buck. Yeah, they're like little wow. little shitheads. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I, I get read, my boys to wrestle them. I had a couple people send me uh, an article uh, over the weekend. Did you guys have anybody send you the exercises you shouldn't do when you're over sixty? No. It was. It's making the rounds and uh, it's. 
it's 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 one of those articles it's that like Shape Magazine or something yeah. stupid. No, it's <laughs> Eat This, Not That. It's another oh, popular. Eat this, not that. Oh, yeah. yeah, and it's not... it's so clickbaity. Did that and... did that grow from the book? Remember that book was really popular. Was, Eat this, not that. A good, yeah, that was a real did it grow book, from so that? Is that what it turned that's into? That's a good question. Because that thing went crazy. I, I know that sold a ton of copies, and then now it's turned into like a, an actual like publication or something. Yeah, I don't know. I uh, don't know. I, I know it's a big website, and a lot of people have sent this to me. I wonder if it's. Connected. But it's so infuriating to me articles like this because uh, it it just perpetuates like you know myths, right? Yeah. Like, well, so what are the ones they listed? Well, here's one of them, right? So one of them says, "Don't do any lifts." In which you're under the weight. So in other words, <laughs> what? No bench press, no, no overhead, overhead press. press. No. And it, it makes me infuriates me because it treats a sixty year old. Yeah, right. you get why it is, but it's te it's terrible. Yeah, because you're fragile. Yeah, so, exactly. I exactly. better enjoy my last four years. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, four. it's over. Yeah, you're too close, Doug. Here's another don't one. Mess with it. Crunches. Don't do crunches. No. People over six Terrible. Well, don't do Stepani crunches. Go, that's oh, good yeah, advice. Don't do those. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> that's, that's good advice that's, for your 60 year old. Yeah, that's for anybody, any age. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's another one moves that put weight behind your head or neck. Uh, don't do any running. Don't do, I mean, so, and here's, here's what infuriates me wow. about, about this is that if you're trying to improve your fitness, you're working out, whatever, you read this, and it's, it's all myth based. Yeah. And here's the, and we've said this many times here's the truth. All exercises are appropriate for you so long as you can perform them properly with good stability, good control. What and you have do good they strength. Promote, That's it. Like like rascal scooter, cr like curls or uh, like what? I, I, no, I didn't say. Okay. Yeah, but it's just it makes me so mad because if you can perform the exercise, I look. I know sixty year olds that could do barbell squats, and it's a great exercise for them. And then I know twenty year olds. I'd be like, you shouldn't be squatting right now. We need to work yeah. on your mobility. And your control. So now imagine you read this, and you're and you're like, oh, I shouldn't do exercises where the bar oh. is above me. And you're avoiding some of the best exercises that are known to me. I mean, I've got this from relatives and people in my family, like even on Courtney's side too. It's like, you know, every now and then, like, uh, like my brother-in-law came. And he's like, yeah, my doctor told me I shouldn't deadlift because it's gonna hurt my back. And it's like all this is bad for my back. Like it's bad for it's bad for your back. Is that is that <laughs> what he's telling you? Is that right? You know, like, it's just like, it's, it's because it's that whole thing. Like it, it, it's just perception. It's like, if you're picking something up, then obviously, you know, that that's a bad lever. And it, you know, there's all these like, justifications they make instead of just that it actually strengthens exactly what your, <laughs> your problem Dude, is. Mark my words at some point, uh, unless we figure this out at some point, we're going to become so sedentary and so unable to perform basic functions that there will be recommendations to not walk. Mark my word. Yeah. At some no, point, they're going to say, listen. The way things are going, that yeah. looks Have that you way. ever seen a graph or a chart to show like our, our activity level and how, how how fast it's decreased? Have you guys seen anything like that? Oh, you mean over like time? Over like, yeah, like if, you know, 30 years ago, how active was the average human? Oh, 20 years ago, how active is the average human to see at what rate we're moving? I mean, I know uh, just in, our, in my short lifetime, I've seen a dramatic difference, but I'm wondering if that's just because that's my perception because I've only been on the earth for 40 years and it's been on that same trajectory for the last yeah. you know once amazon turns into buy and large you know from <laughs> from wally and then it's it's yeah yeah that sucks solidified yeah all right some financial stuff here you go adam i got something thank you all right Boom. here we go did you know that um el salvador became the first country in the world to accept bitcoin as legal tender wow oh, wow it is oh, now a big deal you can now use it as legal tender in a country Wow. Now, now, so speculation. What do you think? Do you think this is like, uh, you know, I go. So I think I think I was probably the most uh, aggressive about it early on when we first talked about it, which is funny because I feel like I'm the the opposite of all of us now, where I'm a little more reserved on it. I'm yeah. fearful of uh, of us being it, it, doing what it's supposed to do, which is to keep government or anybody else having control of it, yeah. and it, mm -hmm. and, and it, that that's the whole idea behind it, right? One, I don't know if if the, like a decentralized currency, right? Yeah. And I don't know if uh, the if the government will ever accept it, or if they do accept it, they're gonna want they want they're gonna want their hands in it to meddle in it some sure. some way or another. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little fearful. At, I still stand by my original statement, which is I don't think it goes away whatsoever because it serves a purpose for the black market by itself. Yeah, I mean my that, tinfoil hat theory. Okay, 
uh, why the gut? I feel like the government is waiting until they can figure out how to literally like hack it, like, mm. like Unless they in, in order to, to to then now this is the new currency. But they're waiting until they can have that kind of control over it. Because right now it's you know it's it's totally decentralized. Well, because cash is still harder to it's still harder to, to follow cash than it would be something that's digital, in my right. opinion. So hard assets for me, like that's that's where I lie. But yeah, yeah it's it's to me like I would love I love the idea of crypto. I love it because it's it, it feels like you know it gives power back. It takes away from the the centralized bank system, you know. But at the same time, like I just like the future of it is so unclear. Like it's pretty well, gnarly. Well, the second you know big countries ban it, then what's it going to do? Yeah. Now, now they're totally now Nothing. you're screwed. Yeah. The only way I could see it overcoming that is if the gov if the country's own banking system collapses, which that would be a bad, that'd be a bad you know scenario uh, all the way around. But yeah, interesting. So is it is yeah, it going to work with other monies or is it are they, are they trying to replace? Like, what's the goal? Do you know? I no, How I don't. Do I, I just think that the government said you can you can accept this is like official currency, not their official currency. I don't think it replaces their current currency, but it's another competing. You know, currency, if you will. You know what's interesting about, you know, in the past, I don't know if you guys knew this. Did you know, maybe Doug, you could look this up because I want to make sure I'm correct. At one point, it might have been in the Netherlands that tulips for a short period of time, people were starting to trade them like currency. Uh, yeah, yeah. Have you guys heard about you've, this? I think uh -huh. you've brought this up before. Maybe Doug, you can look this up. And Because I don't think I had heard that before. And then I think you did. People were up. trading tulips and they were becoming kind of a currency. And then the price of them inflated like crazy. And then they had this crash. This huge crash where people lost tons of money because they had invested all this money in flowers. You know, speaking of things that like, you know, uh, baseball cards are on Weird. a run like that again right now. Do you guys know that? I think are you. you told oh my god, it's getting out of control. I haven't been paying dude. attention. And I, I have like three like uh, good friends and my a cousin that are like. We're all on a thread, and I, they're, that's all they're wow, posting. I wonder if any of my old uh, Ken Griffey and all that are worse No, that, those got crushed. Those are, uh, Did you ever watch the documentary on Netflix called... Um I think so. Yeah. Tops or something. Yeah, it was, I think so. Yeah. So there's a reason why that that actually card you just referred is, is like, is it worth I was so depressed money? on that. I traded all my stuff for that card. Yeah. All those upper deck uh, King Griffey's. I just think it's really, I mean, I think it's really interesting how out of control it's getting right now where people are buying these cards for thousands and $10,000 for like these young players and it just the market came out of nowhere. I mean, from it dying back in the you know nineties yeah. to now all of a sudden this resurgence and people collecting again. You know is, what this all looks like to hmm. me? These are all to me at least. If you look at because there are a lot of things that are happening right now. It's like not having faith in our dollar, and so everyone's putting it in any in anything else. Signs of inflation, right? right? right. Like yeah, totally. people are taking money, and and lots of people are putting it towards some of the stuff. And pretty, okay, so Doug brought it up. So it was the Dutch Republic of the 17th century. Where they were using tulips as uh, currency in some places. Is there, now, was it was it something to do with medicine? Like you could use it for something, or no, was it just because they, they were rare? They just people just start people just, just started like valuing them. them. Yeah, and then it, the the prices got speculated Tiptoe through there, the tulips through the roof, and then there was a crash, of course, because then at some point people are like, I don't want these anymore, and then the market so random dumps. that they pick that. Uh, I mean, do you think that could happen exchange. with all these different bitcoins? Is like right now totally. everyone's valuing them, and so it's so they're all driving up that way, and then one day everyone just decides like, oh my god, this isn't that valuable. Yeah, it's all it would tight. take would be people being like, "I don't want this. Yeah. I don't want it anymore," and now it's screwed. Yeah. But I, like, if I, like you said, the, there's always a black market. That's the main currency on the black market, right? On online. That's why I, I, I do believe it's not going anywhere. I mean, if you're a, you know, a drug dealer and you're big enough to where you're doing anything outside of your state, what that's one of the hardest things is to be traveling with, you know, even cash. You know, cash. You're you're saying that isn't isn't very traceable, but it's also a pain in the ass to mail and ship or carry a duffel bag full of you know hundreds that's of thousands, true. thousands of dollars. Like or that's you can't where, deposit it. Yeah, they'll report you. Yeah, no. So that that, that becomes a, a major problem for yeah, sure. Yeah. So um, yeah. So that sounds uh, insane with the with the money. And so we'll see if there's going to be a crash with 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 the cryptocurrencies. I know there's a few now, is economists it, that, that is it call Bitcoin it. or did they make their own? Did you say that? No, it was Bitcoin. So it is Bitcoin that it they're is, actually it is Bitcoin. accepting. Yeah. In fact, I, I read an article that the IRS did a sting on someone who sold, because you're supposed to pay taxes on your realized gains from Bitcoin. Mm. So if you, if you make, you buy it for 5,000, sell it for 10,000, right? You make $5,000, you're supposed to pay taxes on that. 
Well, they did a sting on somebody who sold, I don't remember, like a half a million dollars worth of Bitcoin. Yeah. And they were posing as the buyer. And then the person never reported it. And then boom. I heard I heard a rumor. That's what the, why the IRS is so backed up right now is they're trying to track down all this, uh, all the Bitcoin money that people are making by really? trading and selling because it's not... It's not as regulated, and there's a lot of people that are getting because you still got to pay capital gains on that. Yeah, if you bought Bitcoin at you know five thousand dollars and you sold it at the at the peak or like that, like that's capital gains. You got, but I guess it's just harder for them to track it, and it, or new newer for them to track that, and so a lot of their scrambling. And there's people supposedly that have made you know hundred million dollars mm -hmm. plus, you know, mm -hmm. off of this Bitcoin. So they're trying to track that all down. That's been a main focus. I I don't know how if there's any truth to that. You know anything about that, Doug? I, I don't, but that's pretty low hanging fruit for them right because it's like okay this is what you sold we can prove that mm -hmm. now you're you owe us yeah you know? i mean isn't it supposed to be really hard for them to trace though that's the part that i don't well, that'd be the not challenge the, I not think. the not the um what are they called the transaction networks. yeah like, if you're using coinbase yeah. or something it's yeah probably fairly easy. i think that's where the, the yeah that's what snowden said is the problem is right. that like oh B bitcoin all those things that that's really hard to track but if you hold it anywhere in a yeah. in a wallet which is what you have to do if you're going to make any transactions with it or do anything with it, then that part of it is is really that, traceable. That's really clear, yeah. Mm. So doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose of it? I mean, isn't that, I don't know. There's got to be other ways, just more complicated ways, right? Yeah. So like, I guess you probably can store it somewhere, but you got to do all this, like most people aren't going to go through all those hoops, you know, unless you're like a big yeah. time. I mean, dealer. the way I look at it is I threw some money at it. I leave it alone. I don't think about it. I think it's very. I don't, you can't even very, access it if you want it, though, right? Yeah, no. I've had, that's, a, that's a, hence why I don't. That's throw the any, best buy and hold strategy I've ever in my life. Yeah, forget your password. Yeah, so, yeah. That's part of why. I mean, that's the that's the part of my fear of not dabbling. I have friends that like they're they're making money trading and doing all that stuff, and I just find it. Um, I find it risky. I don't. I don't know enough, it's super and I'm not risky. confident enough in in that to know what it's going to look like. And so, I mean, if you, I gamble, so who, who am I to say not to do things like that? So, but I, that's how I look at it is like gambling. Look right? at that article right there. The IRS is coming for crypto investors who haven't paid their yeah, taxes. Yeah, see, I, this is what I heard. Mm -hmm. I've, I read a few articles around this and, and I don't know if that's connected to why the IRS has been so slow the last two like two years or so. I feel like it's been really backed up. Um but if there as many people as I know that are trading this, I mean, you guys well, you, all got to know people that are trading this and doing this on a regular well, basis. Well, you know that they're bolstering the IRS like crazy right now, right? No. They're, oh, yeah. They're investing quite a bit. And there's talks about tax increases that are also retroactive. So they'll, they'll re increase your taxes and then go back and collect taxes from the past <laughs> year or two. And so they need yeah. a big, strong IRS in order to, to do all this because that's a lot of people that are going to owe taxes get that money yeah that's the they're really good at that aren't they yeah they're really good at that gotta get that money are they teaching this stuff at schools like i mean a kid like your, your kids at a really nice private school is he getting like an education around cryptocurrency no. and do they talk about it at yeah, all i wonder like in high school you'd think uh, they'd start being interested in it no they learn it from youtube and stuff so my daughter talks about my, my daughter's what? Like 12 is she talks about crypto really? yeah not like she's she yeah, she knows it. what they right so she'll say something She's like just trying to get informed yeah so the, she was talking about uh, YouTube celebrity she wanted to buy some merchandise from some YouTube celebrity and so this whole conversation started and I'm like oh my god it's so weird that you want to buy a T-shirt from a YouTube celebrity and she goes well when you were a kid you would buy it off of the you know the artist that you saw on TV or listen right. to the radio I said you go no to no you're right and you buy it in person yeah right? I said it's the same exact thing yeah I said it's just now it's just a different platform it's really weird to me. And then I said, how many subscribers does this person have? And she goes, well, he's got half a million subscribers. She goes, you know, if you have like a like 100,000 subscribers, you can make a lot of money. So I'm like, I want to see what she knows, right? So I'm talking, I'm like, how do you make, you know, like, how does that work? And she goes, well, YouTube pays you for advertising. You can sell merchandise. She's schooling you right here? Yeah, she's That's just so telling great. me, which is, she's 12. It's, I, I thought this was really cool, yeah. right? Hmm. So we're having this going. And I said, what are other ways that these YouTubers and stuff make money? She goes, oh, some of them make money in crypto. I'm like, oh. So I'm like, what? She goes, yeah, like Bitcoin. <laughs> I said, do you know what that is? She goes, I think it's like money. But I, so she really didn't know. Yeah. yeah. So we're having this But the whole, fact that she's hearing it already is why. Well, I, I, I have know. to ask my older son. Yeah, because he's about the same age. I wonder if he's, uh, you know, uh, researching the same stuff. Oh, it's, oh, speaking of kids. So I started using Caldera on uh, my baby son. Oh yeah. So really, yes. So he has a slight 
reaction to eggs. So we'll give him egg yolks sometimes. And then I'll notice he'll get a little bit of dry skin on his elbow or kind of behind his ear. I haven't even thought about using it with Max. And Max yeah. gets that stuff. Okay, so we talked to the doctor and the doctor- It's all natural. Yeah, so the doctor recommended that we give him a tiny bit of egg yolk every single day, but which this is new advice. In the past, they would say, don't give him to him at all. Now they're saying, unless it's a really bad reaction, you give it to him a little bit every day and then slowly the immune system kind of gets used to it. And then maybe, you know, he doesn't end up developing like a full-blown- Allergy to eggs, but nonetheless, he'll get a little bit of dry skin on his arm and behind right here in the crease of his ear, and sometimes he'll scratch it. And so Jessica's like, Maybe we can put something on it to, you know, make it feel better. I'm like, yeah. let's try caldera. Dude, it works like a charm. Oh, wow. Yeah, I put a little bit on my finger and well, I, rub I told it on you that. You know? I mean, the original way I fell in love with was using it for my psoriasis. And it, I, I, it totally dampens it down. Doesn't make it all itchy. And it doesn't stuff. burn your skin. It doesn't burn. It keeps it, and it keeps it like. I mean, that's the key with like psoriasis because it, it dries out really fast. Yeah. So even when I put the creams or lotions, I mean the creams that are prescribed, they do a good job. But then you, you're using like a steroid type of a cream, yeah. where uh, Caldera I feel like does just as good of a job, and it's all natural. So that's actually how I, I started using that. Yeah. So he, he's not. Like he doesn't pull at his ear as much. Oh wow, and, interesting. Yeah, and it lasts a long time. Of course, I I use it, so I like it. And then I've said this many times, because it's an oil. I was like worried of using it on my skin because I have oily skin, but yeah. it totally balances me out. So yeah. it keeps my skin from getting too oily. But it's, then you put it on dry skin, and it, it does the opposite. I refer it to it as our sleeper product. It was like one of those products that I remember when we first. You guys weren't even like really interested in. I was yeah. like, I really want. I didn't to know our audience would be interested. Yeah, in it. either did I. I was like, me. well, I know I'm using it like crazy, so I'd like to share it. If we can work a partnership out, we'll just see where it goes. And it was super well, obviously well received. I mean, we've been now uh, yeah, past a year contract with them. For itself, so you know, I think yeah, it's no, I thought it lasts a long time too. Yeah, that you know, little bottle takes a little bit of that. Lasts forever. Yeah. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying this episode. If you're a coach or a trainer or you want to be a trainer and you want to be successful, you want clients to get great results, but you also want to earn a good living. You want to make good money following your passion. This can be very difficult. The fitness industry is a hard industry to make a good living doing, but it is very rewarding. And of course, you have a passion for fitness. Well, we have a solution for you. If you head over to Mind Pump NCI. Dot com. There are coaching opportunities. In other words, you will talk to people who know how to build successful fitness businesses like us. We've been doing this for a very long time. We train people for over two decades, and we've actually partnered with NCI, which is run by Jason Phillips. And the goal is to teach coaches and trainers how to be more successful. So if you're interested, again, head over to mindpumpnci.com. All right, enjoy the rest of this episode. First question is from Dan Granucci. How do I put on muscle without putting on a lot of fat? Oh, the million dollar question. Mm. This is a, What's this, the secret? This is a big one because part of putting on muscle or part of the, the formula for putting on muscle has to do with increasing your calories, right? You want to be in a, a surplus of calories to provide your body with the nutrients it needs to build muscle. Now, the challenge, of course, is will this surplus be shuttled to muscle or will it just be turned into body fat. And, uh, and again, that's a tough question. The thing that the, the, the fact remains that storing body fat is an automatic function of the body. If you take in extra calories and do nothing else, your body very easily will take those calories and turn them into body fat. So what we have to do is figure it's out an insurance policy. What exactly a hundred percent. And so we have to figure out what can we do to ensure that these extra calories go somewhere else. Because remember, extra calories don't just evaporate into thin air. They have to be converted and stored into something else. Again, this is a rule of, of physics and thermodynamics. Now, the first thing, and I'll focus on this one, that you need to do is send a proper muscle building signal. If your body wants to build muscle because of the workout that you provided uh, in your life, the workout sends the right signal, everything's appropriate, then those calories, or at least a portion of those calories, will get turned into muscle. If that signal doesn't happen, the default is to store more body fat. For that point, that's why I love to change uh, my routine while I'm also switching over into like a oh, bulk. Send the loudest mm -hmm. signal. Yeah, so if I'm getting ready to switch over into a, a bulk uh, or transition out of a cut or a maintenance phase, um, I also like to transition into a new program. So it's just a, a whole new stimulus. And that way, 
I in, almost, you know, I don't guarantee, but I uh, better insurance that the extra calories. There's a muscle preserving effect. That right. Way. Will get allocated over into building muscle instead of storing body fat. But it's, if you're in a bulk, it's really, really, and if you're measuring on a daily or weekly basis, it's almost impossible to add muscle without putting a little bit of body fat on. Now, if you measure every three weeks to a month and you stretch that that long, it's actually very reasonable if you do like mini cuts and mini bulks in there, right? So if you run in a surplus for a couple weeks and then you have a two, three day cut, and then at the end of the month, there's a really good chance that maybe the scale stayed about the same and you gained two pounds of muscle and you lost two pounds of body fat and you've done exactly what you're trying to do. But if you get hung up on measuring every single day or every week even, uh, and then you freak out because you see the body fat uh, go up a little bit, I mean, that's that's going to happen uh, when you're when you're watching that. Closely. Yeah, wouldn't you say, I mean, drawing this out for an elongated period of time versus like trying to do a more extreme approach to this would make a big difference as well in keeping the body fat low. Yeah, and it really does depend on the individual and, and the circumstances. Typically, yes, but there is evidence to show that sometimes a a shorter, more aggressive bulk might actually be more beneficial. It really does depend on the uh, sure. individual. You know, here's the truth, and this is what makes it so challenging. You don't need that many extra calories to add muscle to your body. Now, some of you might be thinking, how does this make any sense? I thought you had to, you know, dramatically increase your calories. Okay. First and foremost, if you're the like at most people, you're an average lifter. You're working out, okay. And let's let's just imagine you're doing everything right. Gaining one pound of lean body mass in a week is a lot, okay. So that's a lot of lean muscle to get. That's four pounds in a month over the course of two months. That'd be eight pounds of lean muscle. That's pretty aggressive. That's actually probably expecting more than what most people can achieve, except unless you're a beginner and you get those kind of newbie gains. But just for the sake of argument, let's say that you're gaining a pound of lean muscle in a week. Now, if you do the math in terms of how many grams of protein and calories that requires, it's not much at all. We tend to think we need to have all kinds of extra calories to make that happen. Now, here's where the challenge comes from. Extra calories on top of that also, believe it or not, sends a small muscle building signal. Just adding calories when you're working out, even above and beyond what you need, also might trigger a little bit of extra muscle. And then the second part that makes it hard or the strength gains, extra calories will make you stronger in the gym, even if you don't gain extra muscle. This is why you see power lifters oftentimes have higher body fat percentages than bodybuilders even in the off season because adding body fat, I've done this, right? Where I'm, I'm gaining weight on the scale and I'm probably not gaining a lot of lean body mass, but my strength keeps going up. It's all the extra calories, extra energy, body fat can change leverage, make joints feel more secure. Some lifts respond better to this than others. Like if I just gain weight, my squats tend to go up no matter what versus my deadlifts, which not necessarily. And it could be different from uh, person to person. So this is kind of the balancing act and the challenge. Now, the leaner you are, the more likely it is that you're going to need to gain body fat just to gain muscle. So if you're, and I'll use an extreme example, if you're 5% body fat and you're a male, you're shredded, right? You got like ripped abs and you might have veins in your quads and all that stuff. Your body may need to gain body fat just to gain muscle because that lean of a body fat percentage for a lot of guys isn't optimal for building muscle. So also consider that. Now, what if you're really overweight? What if you're, you know, body fat as a man, you're 20% body fat? Well, you, you could probably get away with not gaining any body fat and gaining muscle. In fact, what oftentimes happens if you do it right is you might actually lose a little body fat while gaining muscle because you've got so much extra stored energy uh, on your body. But I think the keys are this, right? Make sure you're doing everything right. Getting good sleep, your workout is really effective. Uh, you're not overdoing it, you're not underdoing it. You're noticing strength gains, it's appropriate. Like Adam said, you change the phase that you're in to kind of send the loudest muscle building signal. And then increase your calories, but do it minimally. I would say probably, you know, two to 300 above maintenance is probably more than enough to get that lean body mass to come on your body. And then the last thing I'll say is to be patient. What always used to screw me up with bulks was one pound, you know, if I gained four pounds in a month on a bulk, that was too slow for me. Even though, even if it was all lean body mass, I'm looking at the scale going, oh, I could gain more than that. Right. And I would aim for twice as much in a month. It would be easy for me to put on 10 pounds 
on the scale in a month was that muscle no it was just a bunch of bloat and and body fat from really being aggressive uh with the bulk so those things i think will give you that we just talked about will give you the best chances of gaining lean body mass without putting on uh, too much body fat next question is from elsa vasquez does eating a rice crispy treat before a workout give you a good pump? <laughs> <laughs> you know where this comes from? The bodybuilding, bro. This is a, this is a bodybuilding community oh, right here. Yeah. Pop tarts, and I did all this stuff, by, by the way, too. It's less about uh, the rice crispy treat or the gummy bears or the pop tarts, and it's more that you're shuttling, you know, sixty to ninety grams of carbohydrates right before your workout. Totally. And if you expect, and this is especially true with somebody that's in a calorie deficit or runs, runs lower carbohydrates uh, on a regular basis, and then all of a sudden you take in mm -hmm. 50 to 90 grams of carbohydrates 30 minutes to an hour before a workout, and uh, yeah, no, you're definitely going to get a, a nice a nice pump from that. It is. Sure. Now, the, 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 the theory behind this. Pair that with lots of water, too. Yeah. Really oh, right. man. Let me water tell you something right now. Difference. Water was a bigger game changer for me for a pump than carbs uh, ever were, were. And then add some sodium to that, and it's like... Remember, the pump is mostly water anyway. Carbohydrates can help with that, which is probably why people feel with the carbs. And, of course, carbs will increase performance. That's what studies show. So why the heck are, are they recommending Rice crispy treats? Well, there's two reasons. One... Is it sounds crazy, so it's going to get you a lot of attention. <laughs> you know, oh, so and so bodybuilder's jacked, and he said he, you know, gummy bears or rice krispie yeah. treats. Who doesn't like rice krispie treats? Yeah, this must be a secret. You know, in the seventies and eighties, what was kind of this like underground secret was to uh, have a little alcohol mm. because it, it gave you a better, it gave you more vascularity before yeah. going on stage. It has all to do with how fast it converts into sugar and gets yeah. in your system. I yep. mean, you, alcohol is the fastest, so that's probably where that, that came yeah. from. But would that be a good idea before your workout? I don't <laughs> think so. You might feel like it while you're doing the workout. Uh, oh, this is a great a terrible workout. idea to me. Yeah. Terrible idea. So why do they say Rice Krispie treats? Okay, Rice Krispies are made out of rice. So it's a fast acting type of carbohydrate. And then you make it with marshmallows and There's some lots sugar. of sugar. So, oh, fast acting carbs. This right. is going to be the best. Honestly, just a bowl of rice uh, will be just as effective at giving you carbohydrates, better for you, not going to develop some weird relationship with food or give yourself an excuse to eat garbage. You want to yeah. eat a Rice Krispie Treat, go ahead and do it, but don't create this weird justification that I'm doing this for fitness. Like the whole reason why I'm eating gummy bears, it's not because I'm eating gummy bears because I like been them. there's so many of these things like donuts and deadlifts and, yes. you know, there's, there's just like a whole movement around trying to figure out how to entice people through like these types of foods that, you know, are somewhat uh, taboo, right? It's like, oh, well, we can use them here because we're shuttling it in right before the workout, yeah. which gives us a performance boost. It's all about justifying, and this is problem with a lot of the mainstream or popular, I should say, fitness industry, is what they do a good job of, which is terrible, is they justify bad behaviors and cloak it. They, they kind of they cover it in this like sheath of this is for fitness performance and health right I, so i pl i played with all this stuff right so i did a lot of this when i was competing i was tracking everything and you already you hit it perfectly which is if you it's really about the fast acting carbs and the amount of carbs before the workout that's giving you this feeling so if you just take out that and instead of having 70 grams of carbs from rice crispy treats and you have 70 grams from rice mm -hmm. you'll get the exact same feeling from that and the reason why I didn't like, and I did, I did the pop tarts, I tried the donuts, I did all these things like messing around with it. And what I don't like about that is that now I would crave that stuff more. Totally. Yeah. So if I was on a really strict diet like I was, and then I'm like, oh, you know what? I have 70 grams of carbs and 500 calories allotted right now. I'm going to go crush a couple pop tarts right now before I work out. Oh, mm -hmm. amazing. Oh, great workout. But fuck, now I'm craving pop tarts, you know, four hours later and the next day. And now I want it. And I found myself. Uh, having a hard time resisting those foods outside of what I was just using it for. So that's where you got to be careful with this stuff is that, okay, yeah, sure. You could definitely do a donut. Yeah. You could do a rice Krispie treat. Yeah. You could do the whole gummy bear thing, but you could also do that same, get that same effect by eating good whole foods mm -hmm. and doing it, timing it maybe a little bit sooner than the, the faster acting carbohydrate, get the same pump and benefits from it. And then now you're not craving this hy hyper palatable food that was engineered for you to want more. Yeah. Or create, or creating this false connection between health performance and yes, the foods that are unhealthy. Totally. I, you know what this reminds me of? Yeah. I had a client once, very smart person. By the way, intelligent people are the best at fooling themselves. I'm just going to say that right now. <laughs> yeah, justifying things. Oh, they're really good. I had a client. She was a scientist, uh, very intelligent. 
and she would have uh, two glasses of wine every single night. And then she would, so at one point she wanted to track and do all this stuff. And so I said, okay, we could track. And I'd see the wine on there and I'd say, well, you know, if we cut the wine out, actually would give you more room here. And this is what she would tell me. You know, Sal, I, I drink the wine because I show there's studies that show that wine has got some antioxidant benefits and some <laughs> resveratrol. Yeah. So like, there's a handful of grapes. Yeah. Get yeah. the fuck out of here. I'm thinking about my longevity yeah. here, Sal. Yeah. That is not yeah. why you're drinking the wine. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're drinking the wine because you like the wine, yeah. and now you're justifying it with, you know, health. It's like people who fast yeah. for health, but the reality is they just don't want to eat for long periods of time, and now they're making themselves feel better by saying yeah. there's studies that support fasting. It's the same thing with this kind of advice right here. So if I hear a fitness person who's saying that they're eating crappy food because it's good for performance and health, I want to slap them in the face. Yeah, That's yeah. not why you're eating gummy bears and rice cream. You're eating because you like them. They taste yeah. good. And now you're finding a way to justify it. Just be honest. I like Rice Krispie treats. Right. Yeah. Uh, and it gives me some carbs. So cool. I get to have a treat and, and get some and carbs. And trust me, take into to consideration the behavioral aspect of this. Totally. Because that, I mean, I did it and I got in phenomenal shape doing all those things I just said. But then what I found I struggled with was that, oh, man, now I want it all the time. Mm-hmm. So. By the way, don't, I'm gonna. This, this is some advice I'll give most of you who want to try this. Don't do this right before your workout. One of the worst things for a workout is poor digestion or feeling bloated. You want to do whatever you do with your carbs about an hour or two before your workout. And a lot of these, like you said, donuts, I've seen that too, right? People will do donuts and then get, you know, digestive issues. As re- That's going to give you a terrible workout. So white, plain white rice is m- easier to digest for most people than a Rice crispy treat. So consider that as well. So you want to not cause inflammation in your gut. You want to have good digestion and get those carbs. You're still probably better off grabbing, you know, just plain white rice instead of the crispy treat. Next question is from Geico Lizard 420 Blaze It. <laughs> wow. Okay. What is does 420 it, mean? <laughs> is it bad to deadlift with a rounded back? You know, we we uh we addressed this a lot at the beginning when you first started posting videos of your deadlift because people hear this, right? And then they see that you kind of have this upper back rounding when you Thoracic. deadlift. So people freak out and go like, oh my God, look at your back rounding yeah. it so bad. But they don't realize that that's not, the, the lumbar is what we're most concerned about when it comes to rounding and that's what you got to be careful. And so absolutely a rounded you know, lumbar spine is very bad when you are deadlifting. But if you're keeping that in a fixed position, then a little bit of natural upper back rounding, especially if your posture is kind of fixed that way, is not bad at all. Yeah, and I'm going to use an example to kind of illustrate, uh, you know, in a little more detail, what is bad and what isn't bad. So I'll use my wrist as an example because it's really easy. So if you look at my wrist, if you're watching this, you can see that I can flex it about that far. So that's as far as my my joint will allow me to go in that direction. And then I can extend it about this far. This is as far as my wrist will allow me to go. My joint will allow me to go in that direction. Everything in between is not the limit of my joint. Okay. So can I support resistance here and here? And here, I can. Here's the problem. If it goes all the way to the end range of motion, and then what is supporting the weight is no longer the muscle, but rather the limited range of, or the range of motion of the joint. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the spine, even the lumbar spine, right? It's got a bunch of joints. If it rounds a little bit, okay, but it's not at the end of its range of motion, you're okay. As long as the muscles are supporting that, you're totally fine. The problem is when the lumbar rounds, and then what's supporting you is not the muscle, but rather the limitation of the joint. So it's pressure on the joint and the discs, and then you're loading that and lifting as much as you can, and the muscles are no longer being supportive. That's where the problems come into play. So a little bit of you know bend or whatever is totally fine so long as it's the muscles that are supporting it, not the range of motion of the joint. Yeah, and with that said too, like you're going to run into situations where you have different like shaped objects that you're going to have to move around and pick up from the ground. It's not going to be so nice and, and, uh, balanced out like a barbell where we're going to grab, you know, like a bag of dog food or like a big heavy stone. And guess what? You're going to be protracting your shoulders for, you're going to be rounding that upper thoracic a bit, but you have to be able to pick it up and do it with good biomechanics. And you do have that stability and support if you train it properly. 
Uh, so it, it's all it's all a matter of like uh, you know introduction to that, be able to to brace properly and, and support your spine and and have strength in that movement. Totally, there's a an exercise that was widely used by um, Greco Roman wrestlers. In fact, if you go, there's videos on YouTube of Soviet era Greco Roman wrestlers doing this particular exercise called the Jefferson Curl. So Jefferson oh, yeah. Curl, that's always controversial. Yeah, you're standing straight up and you literally with resistance roll all the way down so it's like rounded lower back rounded upper back all the way down like you're touching your toes and then mm -hmm. you roll all the way up and people who don't understand biomechanics and control will look at that and be like oh my god yeah why would greco-roman wrestlers do this well if you watch some of some greco-roman wrestling matches you'll notice that there are positions and moves where one guy's flat out on the ground the other guy's got this grip on him and then what they do is they literally lift them up off the ground. So it's the range of motion is ridiculous. You're going from flat on the ground, but you're standing over the guy, lifting him and flipping him over your back, trying to gain points. In fact, there was a Russian wrestler who was just undefeated. They called him the Russian Bear. I can't remember his name, who was just known for doing this. And they don't get injured because they have stability and strength within that full right. range of motion. They've now, trained it. Right. Now, am I saying you should deadlift this way? No. The, what I'm trying to illustrate is – so long as it's muscle that's supporting the position and it's not, and you're not relying on the end range of motion of a joint, you're okay. So what does this mean for most of you? For most of you watching this, that means that you want your lumbar spine to remain in perfect position because you probably don't have the strength and stability to even allow a little bit of uh, flex and bend. Now for advanced lifters, this can change. I've seen some very high level deadlifters who get a little bit of lumbar flexion. Of course, they're not going to range of motion to end range of motion, uh, but they have a little bit of, of, of flexion or a little extra extension with load, but it's totally under control. They're really strong and they're totally safe. So I think that's where this comes from because you see now a little bit of this debate in the, you know, in the fitness world. Next question is from BK Prodigy 309. What do you recommend to get stronger after hitting a plateau on the flat bench press? Yeah, what were some game changers game changers for you guys on incline. flat bench? For in, when I went to incline uh, and just started to focus on that. Now, mind you, the reason why that was so beneficial was because of how much I neglected it. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I for much of my lifting career. I was always into flat bench, flat bench or decline with my buddies because we could lift more weight with decline, right? Yeah. So, and the reason why we avoided incline was because it was fucking hard. It was hard, and I was much weaker on the uh, incline bench press than I was the flat or decline. And I was like, well, if I, if hitting flat bench hits most of my chest, why do I need to do an incline that often? Plus, that's the one you brag about, right? right. Uh, totally, right. So I avoided it. Uh, I shouldn't say I avoided it, but I did it uh, rarely in comparison to how much I did flat and decline. And I remember I just made it a goal at one point, like, you know what, I'm going to get my uh, up, uh, incline bench press up to what my flat bench was. And then for probably a good year and a half, um, consistently training uh, incline, incline dumbbells, incline fat, flat bench, and everything came up. Like, mm -hmm. and, and I saw huge development in my chest that I hadn't for. So that was a big game changer or, or plateau breaker for me was actually just focusing on a good chest exercise uh, exercise that I don't do very often and making it a goal to get good at it. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Watch what that does. And so that incline was for me, but this person could be asking this question. Maybe you don't fly very often. Maybe you don't ever do dips uh, uh, for it at all, like something like that. So yeah, so to, to piggyback off that, the dips for me um, were a huge game changer in um, really working on uh, even pausing down at the very bottom and digging my way out. So I was always working on, you know, getting a little bit further and in, in, in deeper so I could uh, gain more range of motion, more strength in that, that you know, position uh, because, you know, when I go to bench, you know, that was always a sticking point for me at the very bottom. You yeah. know, you, you, you really have, uh, you know, less, less support there, less force production, uh, you know, in that position, but uh, training that to, to, to be able to generate more force there where I needed it, you know, was huge. And then on top of that, just, you know, having proper mechanics and, and stabilizing my shoulder joint, 
uh, was tremendous because that that was always something I ran into inevitably because when you add more load, uh, it's going to expose, you know, kind of what your body's naturally going to do to, to be able to, uh, you know, use whatever it can by any means necessary to get the weight off of you. And so I was not using the same, uh, you know, go to like solid mechanics, like once the weight started to increase. And so that was a lack of stability in my shoulder that I exposed, which, you know, rotational pressing and, you know, more uh, rotational type of mobility uh, practice really contributed to a solid joint for me to work with. Yeah. For, for me, and those, all those made a difference for me, but the biggest differences I noticed was one was frequency is how often I, I bench pressed for most of, well, for a lot of my early lifting career, I would bench press once a week. Cause I hit chest once a week, I'd go to failure, get my chest sore, you know, the whole thing. And I could not get to three plates on the bar. I just could not get to 345s, 315 pounds. That was a huge goal of mine for the longest time. And then I had this, this, this employee that worked for me that just had this incredibly strong bench press in particular. And I noticed that he would bench press all the time. Mm -hmm. But he didn't do anything to failure. It wasn't like he was doing a workout. He would just go out to the workout floor in between clients or whatever and he would throw some weight on and practice benching. And he said, this got him super strong. So I tried this out. I stopped benching to failure and I just started benching three or four days a week. And I literally, not only did I get to three plates, but I surpassed it. It was like this huge jump in my strength just from practicing the lift rather than like always trying to hammer my chest and go to failure. And then the second time I saw a big jump was when I used uh, progressive resistance. It's the first time I used resistance bands on my bench. Um, literally, just, I, I set up my bench press and then I attached bands to the end of it, anchored them. And so the resistance was higher at the top of the bench than at the bottom and I could overload the lift very differently. And that got me to jump uh, big time as well. Those two things were probably mm -hmm. the biggest. But I think the key is, uh, you know, between everything that we're saying, if you're stuck at a plateau, you definitely have to do something different. So whatever you're doing obviously isn't working and just change it. Sometimes that means doing more. Sometimes that means doing something different. And sometimes that means doing less than what you're currently Did, doing. Doug, didn't we do an episode that was titled like how to like eight ways to break through a plateau or something like that? We did do something on that some something time that, ago. Yeah, I mean, and this is, uh, just go down that list. Uh, It'll we go, apply to all lifts. Right, because exactly. We, we went through uh, all these different ways to progressively overload the body. And, you know, when sometimes we, we always get so focused on the, the simple stuff like the weight and the reps, right? Oh, I've done every rep range. I've done all this weight. Uh, I've increased my weight to the most I can. I can't get anywhere. There's other ways by messing uh, with tempo, with uh, technique, like just we can overload the body in a lot of different ways. And we get into that in the episode and just, I would go down that list and look at all the things that you have currently tried and things that you haven't, and then add the ones <coughs> that you haven't. That's episode 1630. Thank Perfect. You, look, if you like our information, if you love the show and you want more great information, head over to Mind Pump Free. Dot com and check out all of our guides. They can help you build muscle, burn body fat, improve your fitness, reduce pain, even guides for personal trainers and make you better coaches and trainers. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpsal and Adam is at mindpumpadam.